This is gritty, gritty, gritty. This is real. This is our space. Confessions of a creative. Confessions of a creative. Confessions of a creative. Welcome back to Confessions of a Creative. My name is Dee, and this is where we discuss the unique journey of creative entrepreneurs. So if this content resonates with you, please like, share, subscribe, and comment, because guess what? We want to hear from you too. Okay, so this week we are talking to Tom Serafini. We have to give him a big welcome. He is a writer slash illustrator based in New York City. Tom is one of my good Instagram friends, and I'm so excited for you to hear more about him and his journey as a creative entrepreneur. We also discuss the importance of finding your tribe and how that enables you to thrive. So give a big welcome to Tom. Alrighty, so we mentioned we are gonna be talking to Tom today. How are you, Tom? I'm doing well, Dee, thanks for having me on. Good, it's so exciting to finally be able to talk to you um, because as I mentioned before, we've known each other for a few years via Instagram, which yeah. was so cool. <laughs> it is a great way to connect when it's used well. It is, it is. So first of all, we wanna know more about you. Tell us about what you do and why, we, why you would say you're a creative. Why I would say I'm a creative? Yeah. What makes you a creative? What do you do? What, makes me creative? what do I do? Uh, well, I, I'm basically I'm a writer and a visual artist. And okay. I, that's just that's honestly, that's just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, I, I do all kinds of things, but I lead with those because those those are the two things I want to sort of have a career with. But I mean, okay. I've spent my life as a musician, an actor, a stand-up comedian, a, a sculptor, you know. So everything, when you, when you ask what, how do I, do, what makes me think I'm a creative, it's, it's because it's pretty much, that's everything I do. I, I make things. Yes, you create. Yes. That's awesome. That's awesome. And it's so interesting when I talk to other creatives as well. Usually when your um, work, when you monetize whatever you're working on in the creative um, sphere, mm -hmm. usually they have other creative outlets. Like I know graphic designers who are also painters and as mm -hmm. you said, musicians. It's just so interesting and so vast. It is. It's almost like there's this little weird gene in there that, that yeah. sort of opens up a, a whole world. Like, but in, in the public sphere, it's sort of like if you see an actor, you just want them to be an actor. You don't want them to be a musician. But you you're surprised to find that how many of them are, are painters or musicians or writers or you know it's it's creativity is not necessarily restricted to one avenue which is right. which is one of the one of the gifts of it true exactly it's like i don't even know how to put it but for some reason i always envision like a rainbow <laughs> yeah yeah it, it, it's like that or, or the points of a star yes i like that illustration mm -hmm. So what would you say is your inspiration behind your illustrations, writing, etc.? Oh, there are so many. Um, I've Wait. always been, go ahead. Tell us about Ollie, because that's Ollie. the one I know the best. Okay, Ollie, Ollie has an interesting history. I mean, uh, you know, anybody listening is not gonna know who he is, so I'll, I'll just briefly describe him. He's a five-legged spider that has the body of sort of like a hamburger and the, the nose of a giant red tomato or a pink tomato. And he came about in 1987, believe it or not. In 1987, my girlfriend, who's now my wife, um, she was having a hard time in school and she was fretting about something. And I put this little sock puppet kind of thing on my hand and I moved it around like a, like a spider, like my hand was a spider. And I said, hello, I'm Ali. And it went from there and I just started drawing these little doodles in a very elementary way because I had no idea how to draw then. And over the years, it just kept getting bigger and I just kept drawing and then I learned how to paint and, and use colored pencils and markers. It just, it just evolved. And wow. as, it's, 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 yeah, I mean, if you think about it, he is a character is 30 something years, he's 32 years old now at this point, only in his world, he's a six year old. And as far as writing go, his stories, goes i mean i always wanted to be a writer even when i was a little boy and i always struggled with what am i going to write i want to write the great american novel i want to be this big blowhard novelist 
And my wife said, you know, you've spent all this time creating this character, creating his friends, creating the world, writing his stories, and now you're painting him. You have your book right here. Right. <laughs> you're like, what are, you, what are you looking for something else for? He's right here. He's, paint, he's, he's in paintings and illustrations all over my walls, quite literally. I have stacks of paper, of sketches and story ideas. And she said, pick one and man, write a book. <laughs> so that's sort of where he came from. Uh, uh, that's how he was introduced to the, to the public at large. Yeah, Lord, I'm so, such as it is. Sorry, I'm so, I'm just so fascinated by that specific character. Well, I don't know your other characters outside of him and his world, but mm-hmm. what I just loved about him, he's always first of all, he's very cute. Thank you. <laughs> but but second of all, he's so he's always off on an adventure, optimistic, and that always rang true with me. I just love that. And I love I mean, I guess in this specific climate, it's good too. <laughs> To have. That's you, you, know. you know you you hit it exactly on the head because he's basically a rambunctious adventurer who's always trying to right. invent something that usually never works or he's blowing something up or something and uh, and he's always full of positivity he's always trying to be somebody's friend or always trying to help somebody out because that's uh, he he has the childhood I always wanted to have but never did and he has the friends I always wanted but never did and that's just the roll of the dice how my life turned out but someone said to me. Actually, I was drawing one of his illustrations, and uh, my wife's father was staring over my shoulder, and he didn't have any context. He didn't know anything. I just sort of told him what the story was about, and he looked over at her, and he said, he's writing his own autobiography. He's writing the story he always wanted to have. So Ali is really about him, isn't it? And that was like a little light bulb. Yeah, it was like a little light bulb moment. And then other people said later on, like, don't you realize that he is you, that all the things he does, builds models, he races cars, he, he's flying in rockets. This, this is you. And then someone added further and said, he even looks like you in a, in a sort of caricaturized way. So he became this sort of ideal version of, of, of me as a child. I sort of, yes, he's friendly and he's optimistic. And I think you're, you're very right when, you say he's something that's sort of needed for these times and which was a hard thing for a while because my biggest um, shortcoming, I guess, as a creative is nobody's going to care about my work. You know, who cares? We will live in such a crazy world that who's going to care about this silly little five legged spider trying to make people happy. And it turns out there's a lot of people tell me exactly what you just told me. Like he's so happy and full of hope. I love having him around, which makes me happy. And I love the fact that you also touched on, um, your father-in-law noting that this is you because I was actually going to ask you that question. Do you <laughs> find that flex maybe um, is cathartic? So maybe it's you know what you went through, or is he reflecting what you want? And there you go. So yeah, that resonates ref- with people. If he, he's it's a little of both to answer to answer your question. He is a little cathartic in the sense that he does uh, um, he exhibits part of who I am and. I'm sort of writing the story I wish I had growing up. I didn't have, you know, a lot of friends and I didn't have a lot of happiness. You know, my parents were divorced and it's a whole big story, but I didn't have that sort of stability, fun, carefree, optimistic childhood that he had. So I'm sort of rewriting it in my own life through his eyes. I just think that's so amazing. And I love Ollie and we will put links to everything people can go and check him out and check out your other work as well for sure thank you so a little fun short (laughs) story Mm -hmm. time Mm -hmm. basically uh, I used to write quite Mm -hmm. often and obviously you write very often as well Mm -hmm. and we talked other on Instagram because we were following different writers well I was following various writers and just like stepping into that whole um niche of quote-unquote or should I say hashtag writers of Instagram because that's how I found half of the people that I got close to and really responded to their work and at that specific time I really loved the you know creative writing and I wrote every single day Mm -hmm. and um I think you did a writing challenge is it A to Z challenge you did like a few years ago yes I would never forget because I participated in that challenge and some of my best like writing came out of that. So, <laughs> yeah, totally. so I want to talk to you a little bit about the experience for creatives in immersing themselves in whatever niche or genre or 
you know, sphere they're into. Mm-hmm. For you, how does that immersion help you? Or does it help you? Uh, I'm not sure I understand what you mean by immersing myself. Do you mean like the process? In the whole community, like being with your tribe of people, like oh, oh, writers, illustrators, oh, and acting with their body of work, and they're doing the same for you. I find that, I mean, about. well, I get it. I think I, I, think I get it. Um, well, things like writing and, and even painting, to an extent, are pretty much solitary efforts. So, you know, when it's, it's between you and the page, or you and the canvas, even. So the, the, the boost you get in being a part of, of some sort of community is uh, not only um, exchanging ideas, but you find people who, uh, since you don't know them personally, they're a little bit more objective. So you could post your work and know that, that if someone doesn't like it, they're going to tell you, you know, well, this wasn't your best, or, or this one I really liked, this resonated with me. Um, but the, the interesting thing about, about what you mentioned about tribes or niches is there really are sort of two in the sense that one of them are the people who do what you do. And you want to find those people because you want to have a community of like-minded creatives, but that's not how you can monetize it because most of the artists are not buying each other's work. They're, they're supporting each other, but they're not buying each other's work. So the other tribe you kind of want to find are your rabid fans. And those are two different groups to try and cultivate and try and attract. And it makes it a little harder because you want your writing or your illustration to attract other writers because you, you want to be part of that group. And, but you also want to attract fans of writing to say, okay, when is your book coming out? You know, I, I want that. And so that's a little difficult to do. And I don't know if that answers your question or if I just drove us off the road into another tangent. Well, first of all, you did answer my question. And I really like that about, you know, um, getting in with your tribe of the people that are doing the same thing as you. Um, I find like personally, doing that for me just inspires me so much and it drives you and mm-hmm. it's not like inspiration and uh i should say copying or rip- ripping somebody off they're completely different things because yes, some people are. seem to think synonymous i was inspired and then your thing looks exactly like the next person's but no you get inspiration and it it's just for me was very grounding and i felt very happy with that portion of my life at that time well it made you um, feel like then, you weren't alone right yeah for sure exactly that sense of community mm-hmm. and what's good about that group is that we got a quite well i know personally i got some really good criticism and some really helpful tips that still mm-hmm. help me to this day with my own writing. so like my commercials typewriting yeah <laughs> but yeah. um it was, it was just amazing so um, what was I going to ask you? I don't know. I know, right? <laughs> I'm having a little, <laughs> you know, I'm off right now. So the no, green okay. tea is just not doing this like coffee does. It can never <laughs> replace it. Time to <laughs> switch <not> back. <laughs> oh, right? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We'll see what no, happens. No, no, now you know it's time for a switch. This is, here's the results of the experiment. Green tea is out. Out for now i need to just call on the coffee train but no so then we're talking about the whole um your fans and your right. followers who are actually going to support you that is so so true so the effect of immersing yourself as i like to say in yeah. your creative tribe helps to refine you and refine your quote-unquote product for when mm-hmm. you're trying to to your fans or followers. Mm-hmm. I think that's so, exactly right. It's it's totally, totally a symbiotic thing, I would think. I would say. Yes. 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 And and I mean if you think about it in a certain way, like sports fans are a dime a dozen. You you can walk down the street and say, How about that game? And someone will respond to you. They saw some game. So there's always that easy sense of community but with artists we're we're not as we're not as in front of each other and especially now especially today in the world today like there used to be neighborhoods and cities where all the artists were and that's not necessarily true anymore in fact all the artists and writers i know are all online they don't live anywhere near me 
And so it's right. especially important, for, which goes to, I think, was what you've been, the point you're bringing up is that when you find a tribe of people on some place like Instagram, and they are people who want to be part of a community versus someone who's just plugging their own stuff and, and running away, you know, when you find that community, it's very, very valuable to you. Because even though you can't do the old model of we're all going to get together, sit in a coffee shop and talk art, you can get online and go into your, 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 your pages and, and talk to each other and find support that way. Because exactly. again, yeah, because we, what we do in, at the end of the day is very solitary. It is just between us and the page and, and what we're thinking or what we're trying to express. But we do this not only for us, but we do it for other people. And exactly. And it, yeah, and it's not necessarily other people who want, we want to buy our work, but other people who do what we do. It is very, I think, important and refreshing and empowering to communicate with people who do what you do, even if you know, even if it's just to exchange ideas or just to talk shop or, or, or like you said, get some creativity and, and or, or critique and tips and and all right, how do I do this? And to find a group of people who do what you do and make sure you stay sort of connected to them. Yes, because I mean, look at this, like we met years ago on Instagram, yeah. and when I started this podcast, one of the first people I thought about was like, ah, oh, I have to interview Tom. <laughs> <laughs> so that That's was great. amazing. So thank you so much for talking to us, to the, well, talking to us, to me, subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, before we like sign off, I would love to just get like a final piece of advice for you. Like, what would you tell a younger creative who's now like stepping out into the world of marketing or selling their product, but mm -hmm. they're very apprehensive because they're just so scared that someone, you know, because that's our deepest fear. Someone will reject our work because some, most times we're like, our work is us. <laughs> so oh, you yeah. feel, feel so like, Oh my God, they hate me. But as oh, a yeah. creative entrepreneur, we have to kind of divorce ourselves from, from that that's very very true because even even like when i was acting and going on auditions when when they don't when they reject you they're not rejecting you they have an idea in their mind of the, the character they want to the, the person they want to play that character if you're not it you're not it and that's as far as it goes but you take it like okay you didn't reject my talent or my appearance you rejected the whole you rejected me and that carries <laughs> over into our writing or our visual art or, or music or whatever it is we do we we you're right and it's 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 almost impossible to separate yourself from the work you do because that is you that is how you want to spend your life this is how you communicate to the world this is what you want to bring to the world it's what you want to leave behind this is your legacy every silly painting or every paragraph you write is what you want to leave behind to make this world a better place and it's very very hard when you realize in your head that not everybody's going to like what you do and the only advice I have, which is, is not simple, it's not a one sentence thing, so forgive me if I ramble, but it is so important to keep going and to, to even if you don't feel like it, even if, and understand, yeah, not everybody's going to like what you do, but that's okay because there are what, 8 billion people in this world right now. Not everyone's going to hear of you. Not everyone's going to like you, but you don't need that. You need 100 or 200 or 500 people or 1,000 people. There are people out there right now who are dying for what you have to offer. And so I heard this the other day, and I'm going to use it in a video. Someone said, don't quit before the miracle happens, the miracle being oh. your, your discovery, okay, that, that point where people find you and, and people start to say, you're the thing I needed. I want that thing, whatever it is, your book, your poem, your, your painting, your music, whatever it is. It's out there. You were given this gift for a reason. And of all the people in the world, there are enough of them out there for whatever you do, unless let's say it's Jamaican polka music, which I don't know that has a fan base anywhere, but anything else, there are enough people in the world who need that and they will support you as an artist. It just takes time. And again, don't, I mean, I've been doing this for this particular <laughs> thing in my life. I've been doing for almost 30 years with moderate success, but I'm never going to quit because this is all I want to do. And that's one of the most important things you have to realize. And the other thing is, you're not, it's not your job to judge your work. So if you do something, and I know a lot of people who've done this, they've, they've written or painted, and they, they decided it wasn't good enough, so they quit and walked away. But they were upset about that. And I kept trying to say, it's not your place to judge your own work. Your job is to create it and give it to the world. The world will do what it wants with it. 
And again, there were enough people in the world to say, yeah, this is viable. Do more, please. And let's have some more of your work because we need you. We need what you do. It's important because there is no other person like you. There's no other person like you, D, who's going to write what you write or write the way you write. And you might get up and say, this sucks. No one likes it and nobody cares. But that's not true because, again, sometimes people aren't even vocal. You don't even know how many fans no. you have because they're just not going to tell you. Not because they're trying to That's keep so it secret. True. Yeah. Yeah. You, you really... don't. Go ahead. No, go ahead. You, you <laughs> just don't know who your, your fans are. And sometimes, and, and I have found this because I, I'm, I suffer 100% from everything you're saying. Imposter syndrome, fear of rejection, fear of failure, fear that it's not good enough. And every once in a while when I'm feeling real low, someone will pop by with a message that they didn't even know they were sending that, that validated what I did. Someone who said, oh, man, your video helped me today, or, or this picture of Ollie makes me smile, or, or I love what you wrote. I can't wait till this is actually in a book. And, and it has happened, and it's given me a moment of pause and say, wait a minute, people actually like what I do. Uh, and if, if this is one person who actually said it, how many people actually feel the same way, but they just haven't said it? Huh. Who knows? And that's <laughs> so true. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. I just I was actually jotting down some notes as you were talking because you've just dropped so many awesome nuggets of wisdom, especially the part about don't quit before the miracle happens and mm -hmm. it's not your job to judge. That is so poignant and I love it. It's gold, honestly. Those are, I have to remind myself of those things all the time. And, and those are things that well, people have said to me over the years. So I didn't make any of that up. Well, you can just come back to the video and listen to it anytime you need to. <laughs> <laughs> but that is amazing advice. And I know it's going to resonate with somebody and truly touch somebody who needs it as well. So thank you so much for sharing that. Well, thank you for letting me say it. So I am sure sometime in the future, you're going to be back here. Just putting that in your, you know, planting that little seed. When I come anytime. knocking on your virtual door. Anytime. To come and do this. This was no, this is a lot of fun and I think it's important and I, and I, and I hope this really grows and, and it's important. I think it's an important voice and an important place for creators to come and listen and, and commiserate, as it were. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, awesome. So we are, I'm going to definitely put Tom's links in the description. So you guys go on over, make sure to click the links, go on to his space and see everything that he's doing. Tom, thank you so much for being here. Absolutely, my pleasure. I want to let you guys know that I am sending you so, so, so much love right now. Talk soon.